Welcome to this recitation on pure resonance. So here we are given an operator PD equals d squared plus 4i, where d is the differentiation operator and i is the identity operator. And you're asked to consider the equation PD applied to x equals f0 cos omega t, where f0 is a constant. So the first question is, what is the natural frequency of the system? The second one is to use the exponential response formula to solve for PD x equals f0 cos omega t. And here you need to be careful and do it for both cases, omega equals to 2 and omega equals not equal to 2. And the last question is just to sketch uh, the graph for the response of this system, PD x equals cos 2t, with initial conditions x of 0 and x dot of 0 equals to 0, basically rest initial conditions. So why don't you pause the video, take a few minutes, and work through this problem. Welcome back. OK, so first, what is the natural frequency of this system? So let's just rewrite our system here. This is the left-hand side. So basically, this just gives us an x dot dot plus 4x on the left-hand side. So the system that we're solving is simply x dot dot plus 4x equals f0 cos omega t. OK, so what is the, f the first question asks us for the natural frequency of the system. The natural frequency of the system can be found regardless of what you have on the right-hand side, just by, uh, by looking at the characteristic polynomial of your equation. The characteristic polynomial here would be s squared plus 4. When this characteristic polynomial equal to 0, we can solve for s and find what are the natural frequencies of the system if uh, basically we get uh, um, complex solutions, which is the case here. Gives us s squared equals minus 4, so s equals plus or minus i2 or 2i. So the natural frequency of our system would be omega equals to 2, because we only consider frequencies that are positive here. Second part, now we're asked to look at the full system with the forcing on the right-hand side and find the exponential response formula. Using the exponential response formula, find one uh, solution to this system. So here we're talking about a particular solution with the exponential response formula. So what does the ERF tell us? The ERF, if you recall here, the base of it for this system, for example, is the fact that cosine is the real part of the exponential i omega t. So we can rewrite this whole equation as x dot dot plus 4x equals f0 exponential i omega t. And we would get then a particular solution if I ignore um, any particular value of omega at this point, which would have the form of the amplitude that we have on the right hand side, f0 exponential omega t, which is basically our forcing, over the characteristic polynomial of the equation, so s squared plus 4, evaluated at the frequency here that would appear in the forcing, in the exponential form, so with the i omega t. So here you can see right away that we would have a problem if using this formula if i omega t was a pole or basically a zero to this characteristic polynomial. And so that's why you were asked to be careful with the value of omega equals to 2 or not equal to 2. So here, let's consider omega not equals to 2 so that I can actually write down 1 over p i omega because we know that p i 2 is equal to 0. So if omega is not equal to 2, we're out of the danger zone. And uh, from this point, we can just basically just plug in our values, i omega t. And p i omega would just give us 4 minus omega squared. So here again, the omega equal 2 danger zone approaches where we would be dividing by 0 if we didn't take the constraint omega not equal to 0. So this is 
the complex form of this particular solution, but we're dealing with a real valued problem, so we want to take the real part of this to have the solution to the problem we were given. And so that would just give us F0 for minus omega squared cosine omega t. Okay? So now let's take the case omega equals to 2. Okay? So what happens? If omega equals to 2, this formula that you're given fails, and you need to seek for the derivative of the characteristic polynomial. And we basically have to, um, 2i equals to 2. So what about p prime of 2i? So p prime of s is simply 2s. So if we evaluate p prime at 2i, we simply have 4i, which is not equal to 0. So at this point, we can use the resonant exponential response formula that you saw. Just check the chalk. Where here, we would again, same trick. The cosine is just the real part of the exponential, so we can use this this formula, and we have now to introduce a t f0 exponential i omega t, because we're solving here for the complex value equation. And now we can divide by the p prime evaluated at 2i, which is 4i. And so basically I can end up with a minus i at the numerator. So to take now the real valued solution, we need again to take the real part of z p. So here now we have an i, so we need to be careful. We're going to have solution in sign. So we have, let me just write down all what we know, t f0 over 4. This with the earlier formula would be cosine plus i sine. The i sine would be multiplying this i. The 2 minus would cancel out, and so we end up with sine omega t, t f0 over 4. And this would then give us the solution. Uh, and here, note that I actually chose the value omega equals to 2, so we can even more be more explicit, because for this case, we actually have omega equals to 2, t. Okay. So the last part of the problem was to sketch the solution for the initial conditions x of 0 equal x dot of 0 equals to 0. So the rest initial conditions. So here are two ways to proceed. The long way would be to seek the homogeneous solution, the solution to the homogeneous equation without the right-hand side, the forcing cosine, introduce two constants of integration, and then seek the, this constant integra of integration uh, on the general solution, and you would find that these two constants of integration would be 0 with these initial conditions. The other fast way is to test your particular solution and verify that it actually does satisfy the initial conditions that you were given. And so you can then write right away the solution as being simply sine 2t. Here you can see that at 0, we would have um, basically uh, a zero. And then if you do differentiation, you just need to be careful here because you have a product function and you end up also with a zero. So this actually is our solution, general solution for this particular initial condition. And to sketch this, we can draw. So here if I just pick zero equal to one, I'm just going to do uh, t t over 4 for the envelopes. At t equals 0, we start with 0. And we know that we're going to have the first extrema at p over 4 and the first 0 at pi over 2. And so basically, we end up with something like that. So basically, it's a sign. Of, of circular frequency 2, 
and with an envelope prescribed by t over 4, or if we had another value of f0, it would be f0 t over 4. So the oscillation is ongoing as t goes to infinity with an envelope that diverges to infinity. So this is basically a solution that would not be convergent to 0. So this ends this recitation. And uh, before I finish, I just want to point out that the fact that it diverges is uh, due to the fact that we are forcing the system very close to its natural frequency. And so this is a typical phenomenon that you, would, uh, that you, that you can associate with a resonance, because we're basically forcing the system close to its natural frequency, so it's having this huge amplification in the response. And that's what these increasing envelopes mean. So this ends this recitation. And the key here was to realize how to use your exponential response formula, how to uh, move on to use the resonant exp exponential resp response formula by testing for the first order derivative. And if that one, if that test failed, you would be going to higher orders. And then, uh, given an initial condition, how to basically sketch the function and have a, a physical understanding of what the resonance means. That ends this recitation. <laughs>